I'm going to apologise in advance. My laptop's playing up, so it might do some weird stuff. My vagrant's not working either, so I'm going to have to do it off the staging server to show you how um, we're doing stuff in panels. Um, so yeah, let's get underway. So who am I? I'm a Drupal developer, consultant and FEMA. We've worked with Drupal since 2009, started on working a project on Drupal 5. I'm joint director and technical director of Online Perspectives and we offer white label Drupal development. I enjoy a nice beer or two, or three or four. I'm active in the Drupal community, um, working in Contrib and Core. And I'm a Drupal Camp London organiser and built the website. So what will you learn? So, as anything, when you're working on a project, time is always of an essence. You don't want to waste time. Well, we've got people coming in. I'll start again. Full, full house. <laughs> it is five parts now, really, so... Okay, so time is always of an essence when working on a project, um, and the way we need to work around it is how to make the solution for our client and for ourselves in the quickest and easiest way. Um, we've got awesome control using the panel's UI in controlling how your content looks and how your layout looks. You can export your panels and your layouts into um, features and you can run Josh commands to implement those. You can customize your layouts in the code and UI, and I'll show you how to do that. And you can utilize views of panels, and it makes your life a lot easier and your productivity better. And that's what panels is, if you want to have a cheeky read of that. <laughs> So there's a distribution called Panoply, which comes with panels, panelizer, um, panels everywhere, and it just focuses entirely on panels. You can use this to your advantage to make your sites um, a lot quicker, but there is quite a few bugs in it. Um, personally, I've built from scratch using my Josh Make files, which I've got created. So in Drupal, you've got two ways to control your layouts. You've got the pagetpl.php file, which you can modify and add your regions for your blocks. Or you've got the panels approach. Um, using the panels everywhere module, you can create your layouts and you can set them to certain pages based upon different arguments. Yes, you can actually control your site layouts from a UI. Full control of your layout. Ta -da. So this is the panel's um, interface. Um, I've got a little laser somewhere. Oh. Yeah. I'm not jumping really, certainly. It works. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've got a stick. Okay, so header left is a region that we create in the um, TPL file, in the .link file, which I'll show in a minute. And basically, all we're doing is we're adding our content into the sections of the site. Header left is like you've got in your page TPL, it's a region. And you just control your layout this way. You can do it really quickly. Omega comes with lots of awesome layouts so you can just put it straight into your site and it will just run. Or you can create your own. But what do you need? Two files. In your inside your theme you create a directory called layouts and you um, create a directory of what you want to call your panel layout. And then the include file is 
basically a plugins PHP array. Um, awesome layout is just the JPEG, the PNG is just so when you're selecting your layout, you can see which one you want. Um, and panels, my awesome layout tpl.php is the HTML and PHP that you need for it. So here's um, what my awesome layout.inc looks like. It's the plugin array. Um, and I've commented nicely what everything does so you can understand it. Your regions here are what we had in the UI, and that's what um, Drupal reads when it renders it. Um, this one here is the tpl.php file, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, the category, I'll show you where that is as well. So this is your tpl.php. It does kind of look familiar to a page tpl.php, but a lot of less code. Um, you can fully customize it. And this is actually from the Drupal Camp London site itself. Um, so it's very simple to use and modify. So once you've done that and you saved it, you have to refresh your cache and wait for it. We're almost there. <laughs> so yeah, it appears in the interface and you can select from your category and you can create multiple different categories and assign it to that. So now I've got my image here showing up and this is my title that I had in the include file. Oh, wrong, wrong font. So, we're ready to roll. Um, I'm going to show you how, from start to finish, how to do all this. But this is basically the content of the um, layout that we've got. And by default, you've got the main page content, which in your page tpl.php by default is um, dollar content. But you're controlling it all via panels, so it's all going into here. Excuse me? Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify something. So when you, um, I'll show you how to do it, when you create your, um, when you set the settings for panels everywhere, you can select what theme it applies to, so that will override page.tpl.php. Cool. Um, this is where my laptop died, so. <laughs> so, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show an example of a site that uses panels everywhere. going to work, is it? It's too big. Okay. So this is my main layout that I've created. If we go to So when we create the, um, when you install panels everywhere, it will come up saying panels. So you get structure panels, and you go to settings, and then you got everywhere here, and you go to it. And then what you do, this is where you control where it will show. So you enable it for the site template, which will override page tpl.php. You provide a sample variant that's just if you want to play with it and then you enable it for the template for the themes that you've got so mine's called theme careers so I've assigned it to that but on Drupal Camp London it's DCL 2014 so I've assigned it to that and then you save it and what it will do is it will pick it up um, based upon that and then we go to site template which appears at the top so here's my layout and if we were to go through it see so what the summary this is all just basic stuff general is you can add and remove classes really easily and uh, you can add your own CSS into it selection rules so I could 
I've done it based off a no type. I don't want it to show this design on a certain no type because this no type is going to be in the color box pop up, which I've done in the color box one. So you've got control of how you want it to show. And I can build my context into it. And I've got my different layouts I can choose from. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Those little pictures you've got of your layouts. Yeah. What do you use to Photoshop. Photoshop. Or just use GIMP. So it's it's more for it's more for when you're like looking at it, you need to know which one it is. So you don't have to do it, but it's nice to do. Um, yeah. On what here? These ones. So these I've created five layout, six layouts effectively, um, because I'm using layouts in different sections for my. I'm actually using panelizer for the content, so I'll go through that in a minute. But this is my main layout. But then, say for instance, I've got a different page which is advertising jobs or something. I could then assign that layout to that and then modify my content in the way I need to. So instead of doing in page tpl.php and then page hyphen hyphen note one tpl.php, etc., you're just controlling it all through the interface and you're making your lives a lot easier. So how many panels have you got in that first one? I've got one. Is that any one panel? Yeah. Oh, this is a panel layout. Yeah. And then if we go into content... So head and left, this is my, one of my regions. So these are the regions. And inside the regions, I've got my pan, my panes okay. and my content. You can as well, if you want to, make those appear as the picture can't be as an image. What, the... So you can have CSS that makes those appear yeah. fewer as, as it is the image. Yeah, you can make it look... How, I haven't had time to style it up, but yeah, you can make it exactly like that. In the um, code that we're going through on here... So you can add the CSS file in there, and then you just include it in your .inc file, and it will pick it up and style it how you want it. And that way it won't override the actual theme output for the front end, it will only do it for the back end. So this is my layout, and based upon certain pages I've got, you know, I want the town hub to show on a certain page, or the buzz to show on a certain page. And these have just got basic selections. So based upon the visibility of path of buzz, it will show on the buzz page. And this is instead of using blocks and getting into the nitty gritty like that. So this is my layout. Um, and then when I want to move into my different layout here, it's just it's using one um, column, and I've just got my content because it's out as a color box. And this is then showing based upon the ta um, the what was it? selection rule of based upon the talent hub content type. It's going to show my content in this layout, and you can modify it. And there's a lot of different contexts. So based upon user ID of 20 or something, you could have a different layout. So user ID one, and you get full control of that. And now, if we move on to a module called Panelizer. Has anyone heard of Panelizer and know what it does? Awesome. So Panelizer basically allows you to control your node and how it looks for the um, output. So if we go to... And then on the different sections I've got different layouts. So when I'm creating my content, my content I'm uh, saving it and then I'm going to Panelizer I'm then picking my layout that I want to use, so I could, I could use any of these, but I've assigned there's some certain rules and config that you can do, so the developer or the site builder doesn't have to go for the Omega ones or the standard panel ones, so I've assigned it just for the site structure ones, which is the ones that we're going to use globally. So if I wanted to change that, I can just click on here. And what it does is it asks you 
hang on, you're changing the layout, I need to move these panes about. So I can move my content right down to here, save it. And then what it's done is it's pushed all my content that I've got previously into the different panes, into the different um, columns, sorry, which is all here. And then when I save it, it's putting the items I want in that certain page, but it's also outputting my um, node content, which is here. And then if we go to the view page, then you'll see it's messed up because it's not supposed to be like that, but it's in different areas. And you're just when you're creating your content, you can have different layouts and different structures for that content. So another example, if we go to a different section, So this is a different layout altogether. I've got two columns normally. I've got a two column and I've got a footer content. And the content is just being populated um, based upon the panelizer. And then this is my node body here. And then all I've done is I've added in a view here and another bit of code here to have my different styling. So Panels Everywhere controls the overall layout of the site. Panels Panelizer controls the content of the site. So you've got two things that way. You can choose a panel layout per node. Yeah. That's basically it. <laughs> um, and it's a big user case. The client has, the design agency has done some fancy design. You've got two columns, one page, three columns, another, four, another. And by giving them the choice of having these layouts set, they can just create their content and just put their content in place. You don't have to spend time developing it all because it's all going to be set out in the design. And when they go, I need it like this, you say, okay, we well, click on the two column, you sign your content, done. Um, and then in um, panels, we use um, there's arguments as well. So this is um, multiple arguments on different pages. And the job section is searching based upon the brand. So by default, it will show all the brands. But if I was to go to, uh, let's go to that one, it will show just the jobs for that brand. And this is just done using a very simple view in the panel. Which you know, was there. So you can see I've got my placeholder here of dollar name, a question and um, percentage name. That's passing it from the URL into my view, and then my view is generating what content needs to output. And then the job search is just literally my various different content items. I've got an exposed form, and I've got a job search content pane and then it's just outputting it in a really easy way instead of using the view page or view blocks um, and if we were to go to the Drupal Camp London So this is a really simple example. I've got my header, which is the main menu with the rotating image. I've got my Drupal messages appearing with the tabs in the help section. I've got the title, but I've hidden it because I don't want to show it. I've got the blocks on the home page that are appearing. This has then got an argument that shows only on the home page. The 
visibility of the front page. And then I've got my various other views and blocks. And this is just a lot easier than just having your blocks and your context. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically the same as it's using the panels engine to extend it, so you can use it on your site layout in total. Because it's for per node basis, so I could lock it down for certain node types. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of config. So these are all my different config, my node types, and I can have the different entity types um, layouts. So for the basic page, I've got it set. They can select which panel layout they want from the node, or I can set a default one. And then by default, it will lock it down to that individual one, instead of giving them the flexibility of choosing which one they want. Um, and and yeah, as I said, the when you get lots of designs with different layouts, this is a really easy approach. and we did. We first started it about two years ago, using it on a website, and originally it probably take a week to do. It took like two days. So, I'll show you the website. And in combination with uh, entity view mode, you have the possibility to uh, control uh, the different view modes with panelizer. So it's very easy. To so you get more control, yeah. You get even more control. So this is using panelizer. Um, so we've got different layouts. <coughs> Let me see this. I'm going to go to different sections. And this is, we literally gave them a few pages and the client did the rest. It's so it's not hard at all for, um, you can give your client as much control as you want, but feel the consequences of them uh, fucking it up. Yeah, you can, it's got the drag and drop abilities. Um, and we gave it to a client and they know how to turn a computer on and that's about it. And we showed them this and they fell in love with it and they're putting content like every other day up in it with different layouts. But that could be the downside. They could just be putting loads of crap on the site which you don't want um, and it could mess up the, the look and feel of it. But we locked it down in a way that they can only select certain layouts on certain node types. So, yeah. Do you get calls from them frequently about things that they've done? <laughs> and they need some help because they when they fuck it up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not as much of this compared to a standard site. This has been because yeah, we locked this down big time. And as you probably know, all the different settings you can have in Panelizer, <coughs> so you can give them different permissions. So if we go to settings, so I can set my which layouts I want them to see. I can set different content behaviour, and the default settings I can use these um, settings here. And then there's more if you go into. So there's a lot of permissions for you to lock down the uh, end user with. Um, and based, you can also set rules up so based upon a certain user type, they can either edit it or move it, or you can lock it into place where they can't actually move it, which is quite handy when you've got a global item which you want to be repeated on every page. Um, that's all I can, uh, that's really it on panels from what I can, uh, we, we use it, we love it. Um, we build all our sites on it, and we, yeah, so, yeah. Responsive design. Responsive. So, you just, this is, that's a good one, actually. Track this. Yeah. So, if we go to <coughs> home pages. Oh. Well, 
actually. Because the Drupal Camp London site's built on it. So yeah, that's responsive of it. Um, <laughs> how? You're just using that media queries in your CSS. Um, and then, so on this one, we've got um, the rotating slideshow here and we've got these blocks here. And then what I've done is I've created a little cheeky CSS class called mobile or desktop. And then in the actual panel, I add that class. And then based upon if it's mobile, it will show it. If it's desktop, it will hide it, etc. Um, I'll show you how to do that. It's very easy. <laughs> but it's on the staging site and it's locked down and you've got a VPN access and all that, so good luck. main menu here which only shows on mobile and I've added the class of mobile so that's literally all you do you click on the settings CSS properties and you add your class in <coughs> and you can add classes and IDs to the pane so you've got more control over it which is really cool um, I mean you can do that in blocks but if you do that using block uh, class it doesn't pull it over into panels You could do. I mean, this this layout. I mean, if you're doing multiple columns, that's not going to work when you. Yeah, I mean, this layout because at the end of the day they're all dips. Yeah. So all you when you set to mobile, just whip 100% and it just okay. sorts out, um, and you've got less restriction on it. And I always use the fences module, which because you yeah, know Drupal you got dot class dot class dot class dot class dot class dot class. Fences you just got dot class, so it's a lot easier for you to target. Yeah, so display nuns in the code. Is it easy enough to bring the SAS up on CSS and show the media query? Yeah. Because your CSS, because they're all divs, so you can you can set the width and the heights, etc., percentage. So when if it's two column in your desktop CSS, it'll be you know, left col 25, 250 pixels, right col 500 pixels. On your mobile, it'll be width 100 percent or clear both. So because they're all divs, so they're like that. But technically, they're like that. The magic's in the CSS. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Can you then change the stacking uh, Only if you move, only if you add the content again and then add the class of different ones in. So you'd have to duplicate the content? Yeah, you'd have to duplicate board. the content, yeah. But then if you're using nodes, so if you've created like 10 nodes and you want to show two nodes on this page on desktop and different two on the mobile, then what you do is you create in the panel you create a new pane item 
and you can assess it to the node ID and then what it'll do is it'll pull that content from that node into the panel. So da, 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 da. So yeah, there's the basic SAS. So for that's for the desktop, and that's for mobile. And then my mobile's got different styling to my desktop. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're at the back. Um, yeah, uh, I might not have understood this correctly, but um, is there a good base thing to sort of build this off? A Mega. I did something like this, and I used Amiga. Yeah, I use Omega 4, so. It works well with that. Yeah, it works perfect with it. And it gives you those, you know, do you see those blue layouts I had in the, yeah, that's what it gives you as well. So, yeah. Yes, you. What caching is there available? They've got, uh, there's another module that does separate caching. I think it works with Varnish. I'm sure Michael knows more than that. <laughs> <laughs> there is caching built into it. There is caching built into it, yeah. Yeah. Nodes forever, and whenever something changes, you go and, and clear it. Um, yeah, there, but it's basically pluggable, so there's mm. like different caching systems. But the usual one that we use is just by time. And that's just out of box. Yes. Yeah. Slightly different. This is about content management within panels. I have a situation where I have what's called a bunch of section pages, yeah. which have little chunks of text. And my editors would love to be able to go in and rewrite, add, move, etc. Yeah. So <coughs> you can do a dedicated piece of text content within panels. Yeah. But then you don't have, you have almost no controls for it. Or you can make a separate note so and pull that in, but then that's a whole palavering. Sort yeah. Of um, well, you can you can make it reusable when you create the content. You can reuse it, and then what you can do is if you don't want them to. Do you want them to move the content around, or you just want it, them to be able to change the content? They might want to move it around. Before. Okay. I'm trying to yeah. Break it all into different pieces. Yeah. So, well, you can you can make it as nodes, but then when you edit it, you can edit node directly through panels, or you can just make the content. So, if we go, See, this is the in place, and you can move it around different sections. Well, actually, that's a real pain in the ass for the CSS. <laughs> <laughs> because it costs well. almost everything. So, everything so when I, yes, yeah, so if I move this one to here and save it, that will output it on the page. Is that what you mean? Or? Yeah, so there's a there's a module called Panels IPE, which when you install Panels, you click it and it will, and you can set on different panels, you can set it if you want uh, IP to show, or if you just want the standard Panels Edit mode. Any other questions? Yeah. Do you have like a little recipe of modules that go well with this, that you could share with us? Yeah, um, I could whack them up on the site, or... Do you want me to put them on the site afterwards, or just tell me now? Yeah. yeah. Um, so on the this site here, we're using panels, panelizer. Um, panels, panelizer, chaos tools because you need that as a dependency. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Panopoly. Yeah, that's what's come up. Yeah, so I used it on a site and they wanted different um, <laughs> charts. So when you change like a, like a date, it would modify all the charts and it didn't play ball. So we just started from scratch. Right. And it worked. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a jQuery version or. Yeah. There's um, another <coughs> Called versatile, yeah. like that. I used Bootstrap on the site and I hated it. <laughs> it just didn't like it at all because it uses less. I love Omega. Yeah. The client wanted Bootstrap though. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, this is quite cool. I'll have to check that out. Cool. Um, uh, yeah. Um, when using Code Pilot features, is there anything you kind of watch out for? You don't duplicate the content, because if you duplicate it, it kills when you re import it, it will corrupt your database. So. Yeah, so there's a, yeah, so when you do features. Insects is not working. <laughs> um, yeah, you, cr you can export the feet, export your different panels, and then what it will do is it'll take the panes as well and the content with it, and you can um, re import it later on. So it's really good for a distribution. So um, when we're, we're going to be rebuilding COD, which is what Drupal Catalan is built on, we're going to build it called Cream, and um, we want to make it so when you Installed it, it installs all the content, but we're going to use panels, so it does it on the fly. So if you use the same pane, it's um, panels across different features, that's what's possible. No, it shouldn't do. I haven't had any issues with that before, but anyone had experience with that? Or do we all just stay away from features? <laughs> anyone else got any questions? If you've got any questions outside of this, just. Uh, Tweet me and uh, I'll answer it. And there's no internet, so yeah. <laughs> cool, awesome.